Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday morning prayer here on this chilly November Wednesday morning at St. Christopher's, the day before Thanksgiving. And a year like this is that much more important that we lift up gratitude for our Lord. And last Sunday, of course, was uh, the Feast of Christ the King. If there was ever a time for us to recognize the kingdom of God is this time. So join us with prayer. This is our last of this series of morning prayer before we start Advent, which is uh, this Sunday. is the first Sunday of Advent. It's the first day of our liturgical year. And we'll be starting a new series. It'll be a daily program from Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. It's going to be a little different than our morning prayer that we've had throughout ordinary time, or the, the long green season, as they call it. And so uh, please join in with us on Monday, uh, beginning at 10 a.m., and it'll be prayer and reflection on this particular time. It's called COVID grace. Sounds like an oxymoron, but it's actually true. So we'll use for the last time our booklet. If you do not have the booklet and would like to join us, you can join in uh, through the Book of Common Prayer, starting on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him together in the words of the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm appointed for today is Psalm number 128. And you can find that Psalm on page 783 of the Book of Common Prayer. We'll say this responsively, and I'll start with the first verse. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruit vine within your house, your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion. And may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first reading today uh, is a reading from the book of Zechariah. This is the 12th chapter, beginning in the first verse. The word of the Lord concerning Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretched out the heavens and founded the earth and formed the human spirit within. See, I am about to make Jerusalem a cup of reeling for all the surrounding peoples. It will be against Judah also in the siege against Jerusalem. On that day, I will make Jerusalem a heavy stone for all the peoples. All who lift it shall grievously hurt themselves. 
and all the nations of the earth shall come together against it. On that day, says the Lord, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness. But on the house of Judah, I will keep a watchful eye. When I strike every horse of the peoples with blindness, then the clans of Judah shall say to themselves, the inhabitants of Jerusalem have strength through the Lord of hosts, their God. On the day, on that day, I will make the clans of Judah like a blazing pot on a pile of wood, like a flaming torch among sheaves, and they shall devour to the right and to the left all the surrounding peoples, while Jerusalem shall again be inhabited in this place, in Jerusalem. And the Lord will give victory to the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem may not be exalted over that of Judah. On that day, the Lord will shield the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that the feeblest among them on that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord at their head. And on that day, I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together our canticle today, the Nunc Dimittis. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading today is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. It's the first chapter beginning in the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all these things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, this is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These readings today, particularly the reading uh, to the letter to the Ephesians, really focuses on us as a redemption people. The ordeal that we hear about in the Old Testament lesson sounds very scary, a lot of fire and you know, stakes and different things happening, the people. And in many ways, we look at our present world and think what an ordeal that we're in right now with uh, COVID actually on the rise as opposed to the other direction with people that we know suffering from it or even perishing. It's easy to fall into despair when we have those kinds of conditions. Sadly, around the globe, there are people that have those kinds of conditions even in a non-COVID time, whether it be starvation or deprivation of any sort, even a house to live in. 
And yet we're a redemption people. We band together. And t tomorrow, as we celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States, a wonderful holiday at, at its own, at its core. It's an opportunity for us to gather around the people that we love, perhaps less people this time because of the COVID uh, this, uh, virus. We are, ourselves, my wife and I, would dearly love to be with our family. We uh, typically, I can't even remember a time that we didn't have at least 10 people around our table. This year, we'll have three, five if you include Banjo and Susanna. But it's a far cry from what we're used to. But, and it could be one that we look at with, with foreboding and, and sadness. But the truth is that we also have, we're, we're, we're so grateful for what we do have. It's easy for us to focus on what we don't have. It's human nature. But as a redemption people, we really are called to, to really focus on what we do have, what holds us together, that how we are redeemed and how we have new life ahead of us. There is light at the end of the tunnel, even with coronavirus. And we celebrate God's role in that, that we are the ones that need to be humble. We are the ones that really need to reach out to the Lord in the darkest of times. So as we gather around our table, however small it may be this year for Thanksgiving, let us lift up in gratitude to Christ our King, the source of all life. That we're grateful for the air that we breathe, the food that we have, the people that we assemble with. And one day we'll all assemble here inside our church and this will all be behind us. Let us continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. For saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor become overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant the people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I ask for your prayers and intercessions today. Pray especially for those people in this Thanksgiving holiday that 
may find themselves alone. I sadly believe that there will be a great many people that fall into that. If there's someone that you know, that you know would be alone this holiday, be sure to reach out to them. Give them a call, have a Zoom meeting with them. If you need help doing that, we'd be happy to tell you how. But I think that loneliness is one of the biggest and most tragic parts of the coronavirus condition. And we lift up prayers for those people that they not fall into despair but live in thanks for what we have. Pray for all those who are negatively affected by the coronavirus, particularly those who have been fallen very ill and those who have died. We pray a special prayer today for Vaughn, a dear friend of one of our parishioners who recently died of complications of coronavirus. Pray also for Mary Ann, the mother of a dear friend of ours, who died of the same. Help to lift them up during this holiday period when they will have an empty chair at their table. We pray today for Jane, Linda, Tim, Heidi, Anne, Gabriel, Susie, Warren, Toby, Bill, Patty, Pray for Molly's teacher and all the other teachers who have bravely put themselves potentially in the way of the virus by educating our children and providing them the advancement in their lives, their academic lives. Pray for those teachers that have fallen ill, that they may be able to return back to their students very soon. Pray today for Julie, Jenny, Nels, Larry, Kathy, Kwame, Kaya, and Khalees, Michael, Sue, Joyce, Ken, Betsy, John, Maida, Mary Jean, Jennifer, Hazel, Richard, Ryan, Kathy. We pray today for little Logan, who has successfully undergone one of two surgeries he has had to have. Logan's a young boy in fifth grade. We hope that he will advance to his second surgery and be a healthy, healthy young man. Pray and also in celebration today for little Benjamin Jeffrey, who entered this world here this past week. Pray that he be healthy in all of his upbringing and that he bring joy to everyone around him. Pray for peaceful repose for Nance, Kathy, Anne, Sue, Bob, Joan, Ken, Leon, Nancy, Fawn, Seal, Florence, and Marianne. Let us close today with the words of the general thanksgiving. Uh, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your measurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth our praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make your common, our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
with that, I bid you a blessed day today. I bid you a blessed Thanksgiving tomorrow and a restful weekend. We'll be having this evening, we're actually hosting a drive-through food drive for the interfaith service. There's an interfaith service at 7 p.m. that we are taking part in. If you would like information on uh, you can uh, contact the office and we'll get the Zoom code to you. But between 3 and 5 p.m. today, we're having people drive through and just drop things off. Uh, we can take down to City on a Hill. So people in this holiday period will have something on their table as well. So that's three, 3 to 5 this afternoon. Let us bless the Lord. Thank Thanks you, to God. God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.